All right, Private. Got it. Up, two, four, up. Foster was a fascinating gentleman. He, he was just enamored with the music of African Americans. And of course, this was in the 1850s. And the interesting part about it is Stephen Foster, through his whole life, never traveled south of the Mason-Dixon line. So all these songs he wrote about carrying back to old Virginia and all those longing for the life on the plantation, he had no idea what it was like. <laughs> At the same time, I really believe that he was writing that music out of true respect for African American culture. Thank you. 
that summer of 1893 at the Columbia World Exposition in Chicago. Now, the interesting thing about that is so many musicians were right there at that time. Of course, you know, that's when trains and, and transportation had really exploded so people could travel. So people from all around the world were there. And uh, an important gentleman in American music was there by the name of Scott Joplin. And Sousa was playing on the Great White Way, it's those beautiful buildings, some of which are still there. The, it's the Field Museum and the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago are left over from the World's Fair. Of course, that's where Sousa played, but they didn't let those ragtime guys play there. But it's just possible that even Sousa hung out in some of those places once in a while to listen to those ragtime musicians, because shortly after that, he started incorporating ragtime music into his performances into his programs. In fact, a really interesting and unique quirk in American music history is that Sousa was the first one to bring ragtime and African-American music to Europe on his tours. So we're going to pay tribute to that by playing a Scott Joplin piece that he wrote with a fellow named Louis Chauvin, and this is called the Heliotrope Bouquet. Thank you. 